30 the Bond, headquarters of Wen Lease. Now Barangaroo is obviously not the first development of this kind that they've been involved in. Take for example the Docklands project in Melbourne. Now I've got a press release here dated the 11th of April 2001. Headed up, Lend Lease wins bid for 1.8 billion waterside metropolis at Melbourne Docklands. And it uh, predominantly quotes the then managing director and CEO David Higgins raving about what this great thing of Docklands is going to be. And just to quote, uh, Melbourne Docklands is the largest city waterfront development in Australia's history and Victoria Harbour ranks as Lend Lease Group's top urban renewal project worldwide. Now, John Tabar, CEO of the Barangaroo Delivery Authority, for 10 years he was the head of the Docklands precinct. He was their CEO. So this is Docklands, Melbourne. I've been coming here regularly for work uh, for over six years and um, I've got my opinions on it but I think it's probably better that we get the, the opinions of some Melbourne locals. Uh, the Docklands didn't add anything to the soul or the character of Melbourne. It's quite out of place. Empty, absent, there's kind of nothing much going on, quiet. It's got no no, none of the essence of what Melbourne is all about and it's just this freestanding zone which people just don't even know why they want to venture there or what they're going to do when they get there. Actually I've got this running joke with my friends, we actually call it Schlocklands and it's just, it's a dead zone. I immediately think of a place that nobody seems to come here for and there's no reason to come here and it looks really cheaply built and it feels like it's going to turn into a ghetto. Uh, I wouldn't say it's done anything for the profile of Melbourne at all, I don't think anybody even cares about coming down here at all. It's so weird because it's all the new shops and all the apartment buildings and stuff, but it's got no feel, no vibe whatsoever. And then when I, I'm only just here to work here, but walking around the shops and stuff, it's so quiet, which is great if you want to get a coffee. <laughs> I don't think it's done anything for the landscape. I think it's possibly made it worse. Uh, I think it takes away from the beauty of our city as well. I think when you, you, know, you look at our great city, from here, you think what a beautiful you know, place we live in and then you look around here at the cheap buildings and you think, God, they've really messed this up. Victoria Harbour, I don't visit it, so it feels like completely separate to Melbourne, what I think of Melbourne. It's absolutely nothing and I actually wish that it wasn't a part of Melbourne. Well, I mean, I only come here because I have to work here, but that's really it. I wouldn't come down unless it was for work. It's like it's been thrown together and developed without actually Seeing, seeing it through to the end and seeing, oh, okay, well, how is, how is this going to help Melbourne? It's just a whole bunch of buildings and nothing's happening. It's, it's not very pleasant at all. It's affecting, I'm sure it's affecting a lot of businesses. There's heaps of closed down shops and all that sort of stuff going on here as well. I think if uh, a developer was going to say that they built the Docklands, I think, I don't know, I think they'd all be taking their name off it and writing John Smith like we do in TV. I wouldn't, if I was a developer, I would not be putting it on my list of top ten things. And there's got to be a lot more greenery and a lot more exciting things that people come and visit for. It doesn't seem quite as livable as perhaps they intended it to be. So that's the thoughts of some Victorians and what they think of Docklands. And even though that's a small sample, be assured I've never met a single person in Melbourne that says anything positive about Docklands. So considering Barangaroo, 10 years from now, what do we want people to be saying about it? <laughs>